Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series in which I'm demonstrating how you can set up an email server on your Raspberry Pi for free through your home router. Now before I go on I would just like to raise to your attention my Patreon account. I'm doing this because you may wish to access videos before they're released on YouTube. You may wish to access videos that aren't available on YouTube and if you'd like one-to-one -one support would like to suggest content or if you would just like to support my work because you find it useful, please do visit my Patreon account. Thank you. Okay, so in the last video, we set up something called DKIM, which stands for Domain Key Identified Mail. It wasn't much fun. It was one of the longest videos I have recorded to date, and it involved a lot of setup without too much explanation. I wasn't keen on recording a video in this way, but hopefully, having been through the video with me now, you'll see why I decided to do it that way. Anyway, having set up DKIM, we managed to get our sent email score up to 8.9 out of 10, as measured by the mailtester.com utility. Despite this good score, however, we're still falling short and sent emails will still unfortunately end up in your recipient's junk mail. So let's move on to the last but one stage which is stage four, and improve it further. In this video, we're going to be looking at ensuring we have a valid reverse DNS record. Reverse DNS lookup is something the receiving server will do to confirm the email received originated from a server with a matching domain. We know that our RDNS configuration isn't correct by taking a look at our mail tester results. We got 8.9 out of 10, and if you look at why we got 8.9 out of 10 by scrolling down on the web page, you'll see that it complains that the RDNS record doesn't match the domain name in the email header. Now, for once, we're not going to head over to my Raspberry Pi. This is for two reasons. Firstly, because solving this problem cannot be done by changing settings or installing packages. This is something you must achieve by contacting your ISP. And secondly, I believe you now know enough to handle this yourself anyway. So I'm going to talk you through it in slides and then leave you to it. So the next thing you need to do is you need to message or ring your ISP. For me, I had to phone them to open a ticket and ask them to set up a PTR record or pointer record on your account pointing to a particular subdomain, as demonstrated here on this slide. In my case, it was mail.single-entity.com. In your case, it needs to be mail.yourdomain. The reason this is being done is because in your postfix configuration file, there will be something called SMTPD banner. The SMTPD banner needs to match what your PTR record is set to. It's very likely it will be set to mail dot and then your domain here. Okay, so it's very likely that your postfix configuration is already correct and is already matching up to your pointer record that you've asked your ISP to set up, but it's best to check. So if you navigate to etc postfix main.cf as shown at the bottom of the slide, using nano if you like, you'll find somewhere in there two lines. One of them says hostname and one of them says smtpd underscore banner. What it should look like is your hostname should equal mail dot followed by your domain. So in my case, mail dot single hyphen entity dot com. You'll notice this is exactly the same as what your pointer record will be. And that's the important part. So long as this is the case, you're all set. The second important thing is smtpd underscore banner should be equal to the same value here, mail dot your domain. And this is often achieved by default by referencing the hostname variable. So hostname equals mail dot your domain. And therefore, as smtpd underscore banner equals the variable of hostname, it is also equal to mail dot your domain. OK, so just have a quick check, make sure that main.cf is configured this way and that hostname matches your PTR record variable that you've asked your ISP to set up and you're all good to go. Now, once you've done that and you've contacted your ISP and asked them to set up your uh, PTR record 
and after you've checked that your postfix server configuration does indeed have an SMTPD banner pointing to the same domain, there's nothing left to do but wait. In my case, my ISP informed me it would take 48 hours for them to set up the record, and actually it did. It took almost exactly 48 hours for me to get this sorted. So for you, the wait time might be different, but that's how long it took for me. Right, that's it for what to do. Once you have waited long enough, you just need to send a new email over to mailtester.com as you've done many times before and see what the score is. And if you follow the steps correctly, as prescribed in this video, such that your PTR record subdomain is equal to your SMTPD banner in Postfix, you should get the following. So finally, we've managed to achieve the objective, 10 out of 10, according to mailtester.com. This is a brilliant result. We've got a lovely graphic here showing us our boat has arrived at an island and everybody's happy. Um, and we've achieved 100% on the score. Okay, so before we get too excited, I need to tell you there is one more thing we do need to do. I've always found that this utility doesn't provide you with quite the full picture and there's one last stage to do. It's not a difficult one and we'll cover it in the last video on the email server series. But for now, you should be very happy and satisfied that by this metric for this service, we've achieved 100%. Okay, so that brings an end to this video, a rather unusual one where we haven't actually um, done any, a, any settings changes or coding. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful, and I really hope after your short wait you get this screen and can share in the satisfaction that I had when I first did this and got this result. Please do like the video if you did enjoy it and found it useful. Please do subscribe to my uh, video series if you haven't already. It's how I know how much people are finding it useful. And as I've mentioned, if you would like to support my work or want to see videos before they're released on YouTube, please do visit my Patreon account. Okay, thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.